Hi everyone, let's do lesson 10 on measures of relative position. How does a value compare or stack up to the others? For example, let's say that we have a class of 100 students and they take a test. So here is a list of 100 test scores for the class. Let's say you're one of the students. You took that test and you scored 50 points out of 100. Let's say you're here. You scored 50 points out of 100 on the test. 50%. Now, hopefully, the test or the class will not be graded on a straight scale because then 50% is probably an F. If 90% and above is an A, 80% plus is a B, and so forth. So you're hoping that the scores will be curved maybe or that uh, at least some grading scale other than a straight scale will be used. Then you might be asking yourself, how did you do relative to the class overall? Did you do average typically? Did you do really well? Did you do really poorly? 50% might be great on a physics exam. <laughs> well, it might be hard just to look at the sea of numbers, right? So let's try to get a measure for you. And the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to find your z-score. This is your original x-score, your actual score on the test but ultimately we're going to care about your z-score, which basically tells you how many standard deviations above or below the mean you got. Uh, if you score at the mean, your z-score is zero. So we want standardized measures such as a z-score that will work for practically all populations involving quantitative data. Even with test scores alone, what if you have a test out of 500 possible points or 1,000 points? Maybe it's a very hard exam like a physics test, where maybe the highest score is 20 points out of 500 points. <laughs> so let's get a measure of how you did relative to the class, whatever the testing scheme was, whether the, uh, the uh, po maximum possible points were 500 points, 1,000 points, or whatever. Or maybe we're dealing with heights or weights or uh, IQ scores. All right. So Z scores. This formula is the Z transformation formula. It will convert from the original raw X score, your actual score on the exam, to the standardized Z score. This idea that we can apply to basically all quantitative data sets, whether you're talking about test scores, heights, weights, ages, light years in space, or whatever. So this formula will convert or transform the original data set of X values into a new data set of Z scores. So we're going to go from a group of X scores to a transformed group of Z scores. And the distribution of the Z scores will have particular properties. The Z, the Z scores will tell us how many standard deviations above or below the mean the original X scores are. If you're at the mean, the Z score is zero. So here's what we're going to do. Here is our original data set of raw test scores, the X scores, X sub one for student number one. It doesn't matter what order you put the students in, whether it's alphabetical or sorted or whatever, but X sub one is the test score for student number one. X sub two is the raw test score for student number two. X sub three is the raw test score for student number three and so forth. We're going to transform this X data set into this new transformed Z data set. So each X score gets a corresponding Z score. So what does this transformation do? So we have this original data set of test scores, the original X values. And we're going to plant a flag at the mean. We did this before when we were doing standard deviations, calculating them. But here's the idea. In order to go from the original X scores to the new Z scores, we're going to transform this data set. For one thing, we're going to subtract off the mean. By subtracting off the mean, we're going to ensure that the new mean for the Z data set is going to be zero. So by subtracting off the mean from all the data values, we get a new data set whose new flag is at zero. 
Again, we applied this idea before when we were computing standard deviations. We recenter the data set so that the new data set has its center at zero. Likewise, we're going to divide the resulting data scores by the standard deviation. This will ensure that the new standard deviation for the Z data set will be one. So the flagpole, the center is at zero and one standard deviation for the new transform data set will be one. Mean zero, standard deviation one. Those will be the characteristics of the new transformed Z data set. Again, subtracting the mean from all of the original X values recenters the data so that the new mean will be zero. And we obtain deviations from the mean. So if your deviation was positive seven points, you scored seven points above the mean. Dividing by the standard deviation rescales the data set so that the new standard deviation for the Z scores will be one. The new sigma will be one. So if your z-score is three, you scored three standard deviations above the mean, which would be excellent. So here we have the formulas. If you, if you have a population data set, a population size big N, a z-score is calculated by taking the raw x-score, subtracting off the population mean, mu. Mu, remember, is the population mean. and we divide the deviations, those differences, by the population standard deviation. I'll put this in purple. We're dividing by the population standard deviations. We're dividing the deviations from the mean by the population standard deviation. Now, if you have sample size, sorry, if you have a sample of size little n, then the z-score is taken, it's the same idea. You take the original x value, but here you subtract off the sample mean. We have sample data, we subtract off the sample mean. and we divide those deviations from the sample mean by the sample standard deviation, S. But it's the same basic idea whether you're dealing with the population context or the sample context. You take the original data values, the raw data values, subtract off the mean in context, divide by the standard deviation in context. So they both follow this overall format, X minus the mean in context, those deviations by the standard deviation in context. By convention, we round off z-scores to two decimal places because back in the olden days, when we used printed tables, the z-scores would be written out to two decimal places. Although nowadays, with technology, computers, uh, you can round off to more. And remember, z-scores are very standardized. They have no units. The original raw x-scores could be in test points or height in feet, height in inches, weight in pounds, distance in light years. But uh, the z-scores have no units. The idea being that we can apply this to many different applications involving test scores, heights, weights, whatever, when different units are involved. Now, mathematically, what's happening with the units is that if you take the data values and subtract off the mean, so for example, if you're taking basically test points, something in test points minus something in test points, the deviations are still in test points. But when you divide by the standard deviation, that's also going to be in test points. The idea is that you have something in test points divided by something in test points. The result has no units. Z-scores have no units. It's not in points or meters or feet or whatever. Z-scores have no units. It's a pure raw number, like zero, two, or negative pi. Z-scores are standardized measures of relative position how you do relative to the data set overall. So again, if we're studying heights, 
then we might use inches, feet, meters, light years, whatever, and we'll still obtain the same Z-score, whatever the context. So whether you're measuring people in inches, feet, meters, or giants in light years, you'll get the same Z-score in terms of the giant's relative position in the group of giants or your relative position in the classroom. So next up, we're going to interpret Z-scores.